والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا May Allah make us from among them May Allah truly make us from among them Those who spend their nights between bowing and prostration for Allah between standing in prayer and in sujood in prostration for Allah in another verse in Surah Sajda that I just read now Allah is describing it by saying those whom Allah has chosen they forsake their beddings their sides forsake their beddings I'm no longer lying down I got up why everyone is asleep my Lord is awake and he will always be awake I have my needs I'm going to cry to my Lord when you are struggling when you are suffering when something's gone wrong in your life it is a blessing of Allah the first port of call is that you change your life in a positive way by connecting with Allah more than you have been if your problem did not prod you to getting up at night when everyone was asleep to cry to Allah then it's not yet a problem it's not yet a problem Allah will squeeze you further do you know why he loves you he wants you to do something he wants to invite you to an act of worship that is fulfilled by invite only that is tahajjud Allah invites those whom he loves to that prayer and sometimes the invitation is through squeezing you squeezing you until you realize I have to I will get up I will cry I will ensure that I cry and shed tears and beg Allah and continue to beg Allah until he gives me what I want and I promise you Allah is all hearing Allah will give you even better than what you asked for there was a, a, a girl a few years ago who said Allah is not listening to my prayer I said why because I want to marry a specific person and it is not happening I said make dua to Allah perhaps he will give you someone better no I don't want someone better I want that particular person I come on are you prepared to say oh Allah give it to me if it is good for me no I'm not I want it well then you have a problem with Allah Allah, Allah knows whether it's good or bad. We are taught, Allahumma, in kana hadha al-amra khayrun li fi dini wa ma'ashi wa aqibatu amri fa fayassirhu li faqdirhu li wa yassirhu li thumma barik li fihi wa in kana hadha al-amra sharrun li fi dini wa ma'ashi wa aqibatu amri fasrifu anni wa srifni anhu waqdur li al-khayra haythu kan thumma ardini bihi that's the dua of istikhara. I'm sure many of us know it off by heart. Am I right? There we are. What, what does it mean? Oh Allah, if this is good for me, if you know that it's good for me, my deen and so on, my, you, we don't know the future. Allah knows. We don't know what is coming. Allah knows. We don't know what would happen as a result of what I want. Allah knows. So, oh Allah, if you know that it is good for me, my deen, etc., etc., make it easy for me, give it to me, write it for me, and facilitate it and give me barakah in it. And if you know it is not good for me, for my deen and my life and whatever else and my future and so on, then distance it from me, distance me from it, create a barrier between us and make me happy with your decree. It took her some time and then she started looking beyond what she wanted she says i've been crying to allah oh allah grant me you said allah may grant me better allah has granted me way better than what i asked subhanallah subhanallah and i share this with you to give hope to those who feel that allah is not answering Wallahi, he knows better than you what is best for you. So keep on trusting him and trust him and thank him. For indeed it is through gratitude that you will achieve. Thank Allah. Everyone's complaining about every little thing. Thank Allah. May Allah grant us. So pray at night when everyone is asleep. What will happen with the combination of all these things? Allah says we will grant you entry into paradise with ease Abdullah ibn Salam says 
when I heard these words and I saw his face, looking at his face, I knew this is not the face of a liar. Imagine someone telling you, I can see this face. This is not the face of a liar. Sometimes you see a face of a person and you know this one is a liar. If you can recognize one who doesn't lie, you can surely recognize one who lies. But you need to have some connection with Allah to be able to do that. It's like someone saw the movie years ago that came out called The Message. Some of you might have watched it. The Message. What is it about? The seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, the life of the Prophet ﷺ, it's called The Message. And I heard someone say, did you see the nur on Hamza? Did you see the nur on the face of Hamza radiallahu anhu? I got up, I said, my brother, that was Anthony Quinn. He's actually a non-Muslim actor. It goes to show that what nur is, you need nur to recognize nur. The people of virtue are recognized by people of similar virtue. Sometimes when you're connected with Allah, you can pick up certain things. A true believer has a firasa. They have an understanding, some understanding that is slightly deeper than that of the rest because he's connected with Allah. And he looks with the light of Allah. Allah shines something for him. He can see, she can see a little bit more. You can pick things up sometimes. And you come in to tell me, look at the nur on the face of Anthony Quinn. Come on, my brother. Come on. It's like watching, what do they call it here? Nollywood, right? And you say, oh, mashallah, subhanallah. That's an actress, man. That's an actor. May Allah Almighty protect us. So Abdullah ibn Salam says, I looked at the face, I knew it was not the face of a liar. I heard these wonderful, beautiful, powerful, amazing words, jawami'ul kalim, short, small words with massive meanings. I knew this is the messenger of Allah that we are waiting for. He goes to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and declares his faith. We've heard all these ahadith. We are believers with faith, but we are dwindling in our faith. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah strengthen me to begin with. And all of us, imagine the peace we are searching for. When you develop a feeling for others and you realize and recognize that they are the creatures of Allah created in a similar way that you were created. So if your life is all about impressing Allah and showing Allah who you are and how good you are because you want to impress him, to invoke his love, to actually get his blessings, what will you do? You will be so kind and so good to all the creatures of the same Allah. That is when you are truly liberated. Because why? I want to impress Allah, but Allah made these people, everybody, who I met on the street, who I meet, who speak good about me, who don't speak good about me, who are kind, who are not kind, who are good, who are not good, who are honest, who are dishonest, who are upright, who are not upright. Allah made all of them. How I am with them would actually either impress my Lord or not. So let me deal with them in a beautiful, impressive way. I don't mean that when there is a criminal, you still need to be good to the criminal. A robber enters your home, you, you, you tell them, Salaamu Alaikum, what would you like to steal? You know, I believe in Allah. He made you, He made me. Please take what you want. No, please do not get that wrong. Sometimes you need to crack a whip in a beautiful way. When it comes to the penal code in Islam, Allah Almighty has dictated that it be thoroughly investigated if the person is found guilty of the crime not beyond reasonable doubt but with no doubt at all they need to be made an example of in order for it to be a deterrent for everyone else that's islam you know the penal code in islam the difference is if you can prove it beyond reasonable doubt and not without any doubt then you cannot get to the had because there is a small shubha there is a small doubt in it, even if it is a minor doubt, the punishment becomes lesser. You might, it might be a jail term, it might be some other term, but what Allah says is, when something has been proven without doubt, you see, if you go to the courts today, they will jail someone for 15 years based on 
beyond reasonable doubt. That's why in America, mostly, you find cases of people who are freed after 20 years of wrong imprisonment. Have you seen those? Because why? They just said beyond reasonable doubt. And it's done. In Islam, beyond any doubt whatsoever, then you can do something. May Allah Almighty protect us. So an example is made in order for it to be a deterrent for others. So what I'm showing you is it doesn't mean that because you are so merciful, you should not stand up for justice. Look what Allah says. Allah instructs you to be just and to be kind and to give your relatives. Three instructions. Justice, kindness and giving your relatives. Look after them. Why does justice come before kindness? Because it is not kind to let go of justice. It's not kindness. I can't say, oh, this person, you know, just forgive them. Never mind. They stole, a, they stole two million from you. Two million naira. Just forgive them. As it is, the naira has dropped quite a bit. Just forgive them. By the time you get it back, the two million will only be worth a bottle of Coke. Firstly, I don't drink Coke. I stopped. I've lost a few kilos as a result. I feel healthier. I invite you to stop too. MashaAllah. May Allah bless you. Are we going to stop? Allah, Allah, Allah. You get a triple reward if, if you know. But thereafter, you can't come to me and tell me, just, it's okay, you know what, have a be, just be kind. Justice comes first. When you have served that, then yes, we are all kind. It's kind to be just. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba. You don't just go to a person, you know what, it's okay. Someone was divorced and the kids were taken away by one party and the other party was told you're never going to see your kids and they keep telling them, it's okay, it's okay, just, just have a big heart. What do you mean big heart? I need to fight for my children, man. I need to ensure that whatever's supposed to happen, happens because children need both parents divorced or not divorced. One of the biggest gifts you can give your children is for them to be able to see you and your spouse living in goodness and how you interact. Many men are not even interested. And some of the women have lost the interest as a result. When your children watch you as they grow up, interact with each other in a loving, kind, beautiful way, wallahi, it empowers them. You want to build community, invest in your own children. Invest in your children. Look at how Allah tells you, your relatives, your relatives, your, who's, who are the closest to you? Your parents, your spouse, your children, what else? Closest, then your brothers and sisters, and who else? And then the broader family, but it starts off somewhere. Charity begins at home. That's the reason why the Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The best from amongst you are those who are best to their family members, starting with a wife. And in the case of the wife, starting with your own husband. When you are good there and they can bear witness that you are good, wallahi, you are really good. Because they see you throughout the day, throughout the night. They see you good mood, bad mood. So when I'm in a bad mood, oh, you need to be careful. When I'm in a bad mood, you can just stay aside. See, my friends are laughing because they know, they, they're with me. They say, this man, when he's in a bad mood, just, just come, just relax. Keep a bit of a distance and give him his space. We all get moods, moody. You're not normal if you don't. <laughs> Look at me covering my own back. May Allah protect us. May Allah strengthen us, really. But what I mean is, we need to realize those you live with in your closest of circles know you better than others. They know you better. The Prophet ﷺ clearly says, when they can bear witness for you, I promise you, you're a good person. You're a good person. Because you know why? The circles that you are the most intimate with are saying, this man is really a good man. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless us. Allah grant us goodness. So, are we going to invest, inshallah, in our own children? You know what? The yes came from this side and not this side. Maybe some of these young men are not even married yet. But you can say, yes, Allah will bless you with the children. Are we going to invest in our children, inshallah? Wallahi, wallahi, we promised Allah. 
When, when the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were making promises, they were massive promises. Promises of dying in the cause of Allah. We just made a little promise to say, you know what? Invest in your family members. Learn to bring up your children with good qualities. They are the future. They will make up society, community. You notice the attendance here as the years pass. If the attendance becomes smaller and smaller, it's because we haven't succeeded in raising the new generations to give them the importance of such gatherings. We don't realize it. They won't come. They won't attend because they will be elsewhere. Whereas I have seen communities in the West, the young ones are more keen on such gatherings than the older ones. Wallahi, I promise. Imagine, don't think for a moment that Allah will be stuck, na'udhu billah, because of your lack of or non-interest in the deen of Allah. No chance. If you don't come, Allah will take somebody else to come. If you didn't occupy the space, it's going to be occupied by someone else. I always tell people, you abandon a teaching. Allah brings others who will not abandon the, teaching, the teachings in their tens or hundreds or thousands. If you left something that you were supposed to do, let me give you a simple example. Those who've abandoned, may Allah may strengthen all of us. This is just by way of example. Those who've abandoned their hijab, for whatever reason it may be, Allah, as a direct result of that one abandonment, has brought up, created 10, minimum 10 others or 100 others who will don the hijab. You abandon your deen as a direct result of that. Allah brings about another 10 or 100 or more or less who will take that space. If you are going to turn away, Allah will replace you with others and they won't be like you. Allah will replace. So don't think I abandoned. You were rejected by Allah. Does he need you? Wallahi, he doesn't. Wallahu al-ghani wa antum al-fuqara. These very words of Allah are just preceding the ones I read earlier. <laughs> what is Allah saying? Allah is independent. You are the ones in need, meaning us. We are in need. Allah is not in need. You can pray all your life. I want to end with one beautiful, powerful narration. Where the Prophet ﷺ tells us that, you know what? If Allah had to give from the first human being to the last human being, the billions and the trillions and the quadrillions and the pentillions and the nonillions and the decillions of humans that must have passed on earth right up to the last one after we are gone. If Allah had to give each one of them and every jinn from the beginning of jinn kind to the end of jinn kind, every single thing that they ever desire and asked for. And Allah had to give them all that which they wanted from the beginning to the end. Allah says, it does not displace the kingdom of Allah from the kingdom of Allah except that which is similar to when a pin or a needle is put into the ocean and taken out. Allahu Akbar. Do you know there is something called the James Webb Telescope? Please check it out, follow it, download the app and have a peep at what's going on. They launched it some time back. Go into space, go as far as you can, bring back images, send back live images. We want to see what there is. Wallahi, this telescope's been going and going and every time it's going, it's discovering planets huger than ever before, non-stop. Thousands, millions, billions, trillions, it's just not ending like the sand in the desert. Do you know that? It's a fact. It's true. Go check it. I was speaking to people and I said, you know the power of Allah, these stars that you see in the skies, do you know that the nearest one is actually approximately four and a half light years away? You know what that means? What is a light year? A light year means you go out and you see it, you can see the light, the light of the star. This, that light took four and a half years to get to your eyes, which means what you are seeing is actually an image from four and a half years back. That's the meaning of light years away. And if the nearest one is four and a half light years, it could perhaps not be there. And you're only seeing it as though it's there, but it's not there anymore because four and a half years later, you'll discover, oh, it's not there. Allahu Akbar. 
That is Allah's creation. It's mind-boggling. And who are you messing with? Allah. Allah says, do you know what? The last person to enter Jannah, we will give him 10 times more than this whole world and whatever it has. The last one to enter Jannah. This world is nothing in the eyes of Allah. Don't be deceived. Our lives are short. Let's make a change. Let's effect a change. Let's invest in our families, in our children, in our spouses. Let's go out to, to make amends. Let's go out to solve problems and matters. Don't create them. Learn to face your, your, your issues and solve them. Give and take. Have a heart that is compassionate. Who is addressing you? If it is your spouse, your family members, have a softer heart for them. Because you need to solve the problem. You need to resolve. If you're not going to resolve issues, I promise you, you're going to go nowhere. How will you build a society when the children are astray? Because neither father was there, nor mother was there. No one was there to take care of them besides the mobile phone and the television. So they're living their lives thinking they're movie actors. And therefore, they do whatever was done there. And you and I know we're living in an age where people are doubting whether they are human or fish. Yes, I have seen someone saying, I'm a fish. They say, what do you mean? No, I identify as a fish. And he thinks so. And he keeps on saying, I'm a fish. I say, what, what world are we living in? And then another one tapped me and said, be careful. You're not allowed to tell him that. He has a right to believe he's a fish. Allahu Akbar. Is that where we've gotten? The law of the land stipulates in some nations... That you can be whatever you identify, identify yourself as. Oh, Allahu Akbar. A guy standing like this. I'm a tree. Where's your fruit, brother? May Allah grant us ease. Wallahi, it's worth laughing at because intelligent people, their brains are knocked completely. One wonders because they don't have the connection with Allah, with their maker. That's the reason. So, if you're not going to invest in your children, they will be raised by what I've just mentioned now. And if that's the case, we're heading for disaster. So much of immorality is being spread through social media. But at the same time, so much of goodness is being spread on social media. I picked up my phone in the teen session earlier and I told them, can I open my TikTok account and show you my FYP? And they said, yes, yes, because you know what? When you see the FYP, you can literally tell how the person's been using the app because of algorithms and so on. And I showed them. I showed them. I flicked about 10, 15 times. And they were surprised. Have you seen anything dirty here? No. You see, it depends how you use social media. You need to use it. I've learned more from TikTok than I've learned from any other platform online. I'm not saying online is the go-to, but I'm saying there are so, much things, so many things we can learn. If you want to use it constructively, use it. But there's no one to mentor the children for them. It's anything exciting. We're playing games and next best thing, you know, a lot of immorality comes in. The values are lost. Everything's lost. Then society crumbles. We no longer, it's all about myself. I need to make the money. I don't care about anyone else. I need to do. I don't care about the others. That business of I don't care about others is actually godless. We care. We care about everyone. We care about those we know, those we don't know. You spread that salam and see what happens. You spread the goodness today. Greet each other. Greet each other. I ask you right now to look at the person next to you and say assalamu alaikum in their face. And do you know when we pray and we are in jama'ah, we actually say assalamu alaikum. We are greeting. Who are we greeting? The people and the angels. We get to know one another. Sometimes we, we attend the same masjid. We go to the same place. We've never spent a moment to say, how are you? We've never smiled at each other. And smiling is an act of charity. Imagine, no religion has said smiling is a charity besides Islam. Islam is the only faith. It goes as far as teaching you the expression on your face and how it should be. Because when you smile, you know what? Even if my day was so bad, I just have to break into a smile again. Imagine if I smile, we'll all smile. Am I right? Everyone's there. Look, look at that. MashaAllah. Even if you don't want to, here goes. I show you more teeth. Look. There we are. It's contagious. May Allah Almighty bless us all and grant us goodness. May Allah Almighty truly help us to rebuild and reconnect with Allah. 
for indeed that reconnection with Allah is of essence. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahi bihamdih subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.